Scattered people, scattered people. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's, it's a pleasure to be here once again. Let me introduce the people on the dais. To my far right, uh, Gareth Rhodes, who's a Deputy for, of Financial Services here in the state of New York, but he's been working with us on this since uh, it began. Dr. James Malatris, to my right, not a real doctor, but a PhD doctor, which still counts to be a doctor. To my left, Secretary Melissa De Rosa, who uh, is the top uh, state official, appointed state official. Pleasure to be with her. It's a pleasure to be in Rochester today, uh, really around the Coit, but uh, for most people, uh, they'll relate to Rochester. It's a pleasure to be in the Rochester Regional Health uh, facility, and I want to thank the President and CEO, Eric Bieber, very much for having us here today. I also, we're joined by a number of elected officials. I want to thank them for being here. We have County Executive Adam Bello. Pleasure to be with you. We have that great congressman who uh, had a really challenging position before he went to Congress because he was working in New York State government. Uh, but he's now in Washington, and he's a uh, we need his voice there more than ever. This is going to be a big week in Washington. Uh, we need to get the federal government to recognize the situation that state governments face uh, and fund not just corporate America, but fund working Americans, police, firefighters, school teachers. Uh, they have yet to do that to the extent necessary, and hopefully with the leadership of the House, we'll get that done this week. We have Robert Duffy, who is former mayor of Rochester, uh, my great lieutenant governor for in the first term. Pleasure to be with him uh, as we go forward. We have elected officials here with us today. I also ask the elected officials all across the state to join us uh, to understand today's presentation. So we invited all the county executives, we invited all the mayors uh, to listen uh, to this presentation because we start a new chapter uh, today, in many ways, uh, it's a new phase, if you will. May 15th is the end of the statewide closure. May 15th is the end of this week. Uh, and the question is now going to shift more towards localities and regions across the state to uh, make sure they're in a position to open. And uh, the state will be working in coordination with them. but. It's an exciting new phase. We're all anxious to get back to work. Uh, we want to do it smartly. We want to do it intelligently, but we want to do it. And uh, that's what this week is going to be all about. Uh, in terms of where we are, total hospitalizations are down again. Uh, that net change is down again. The net change in intubations is down again. The number of lives lost, still too high, obviously at 161 but better than it has been. Uh, so we see all the arrows are pointed in the right direction. If you look at the number of new COVID cases per day, about 488, uh, that is just about where we started this horrific situation, right? So uh, May 10th, we're right about where we were on March 19th, before we uh, went into the abyss uh, of the COVID virus. And when you see the number of lives lost, again, we're right about where we started uh, before we really uh, went into the, uh, the heart of this crisis. And that's what it's been. It's been a, a crisis and a painful one. Uh, but we're coming out of the other side. So in many ways, from my point of view, we're on the other side of the mountain. Right, We got hit with the virus. We saw that incline. We saw the number of cases growing. We saw the number of deaths growing. We finally hit a plateau because we did what we needed to do, and we changed our behavior, and we closed down, and we, we turned the corner, and then we started to come down the other side, and that was the decline. Uh, and now the decline has gotten to a point where we are just about where we started uh, the journey. So uh, to turn to reopening, uh, because we have abated the worst by what we've done, 
and now we can intelligently turn towards reopening. And that's May 15th, that's this Friday. Uh, and local regions all across the state should start to prepare for it, and people as well. And that's what we want to start to talk about today. We're going to open when we are ready to open. What does ready to open mean? Well, first, the number of hospitalizations, the infection rates uh, show decline. The federal government with CDC guidelines uh, have laid that out, and we think it's intelligent. We accepted the federal guidance. And we have testing tracing in place in every local region. Testing and tracing, words we never really heard before this situation, but now people have hear them every day. Uh, testing, have the capacity to do enough tests, diagnostic tests, are you positive or you're negative, antibody tests, did you have the virus, uh, and have you resolved the virus. Have that testing capacity in place, tracing, when you find a positive case, trace it back, uh, and then isolate the positive so you reduce the spread. Sounds simple, logistical nightmare, never been done before. But that's what testing tracing uh, is all about, and that has to be done region by region. Uh, that capacity has to fit every locality. We talk about being New York tough, and what tough really means, and the second word in New York tough is always smart. And we have been smart through this, and we have to continue to be smart. There are seven metrics, if you will, to get it down to a quantifiable situation. Uh, that each region has to look at. First are the infection rate, the number of hospitalizations, the 14-day decline uh, in hospitalizations, or under 15 new hospitalizations. That means you're controlling the hospitalizations. Uh, new hospitalizations under two per 100,000, so you know that uh, the virus, again, is under control. Uh, then number four, uh, let's learn from the past, we had a true public health emergency, that we were in danger of overwhelming our hospital capacity, uh, let's make sure we have 30 percent buffer in a number of available hospital beds in case that virus takes off again on you. You want to make sure we have hospital beds, so hospitals up to 70 percent, but 30 percent available hospital beds, 30 percent available ICU beds. Many of the people who come in with this virus need an ICU bed. We want to make sure we have the ICU beds uh, if, if we need them, God forbid. Uh, and then testing capacity so we know what the virus spread is doing. You don't know what the virus is doing unless you are testing. And then the tracing that uh, fits with the testing program. We've been uh, doing more tests than any state in the United States of America. So New York is way ahead in what we're doing on testing. We've come up to speed faster. We're doing more tests per capita than any country on the globe. So we're doing very well in that regard, but you need it in every region. It doesn't help uh, the Finger Lakes if, if the capital district has enough testing. You have to have enough testing and enough tracing uh, in the Finger Lakes. So each region has to have that in place, and we understand that. Uh, we can measure this. This has always been about data and science for us. And you can look at it, each individual region, and you will know where each region is in the state by those criteria. So you know what your infection rate is, you know what your hospitalization rate is, you know how many tests you need in place, you know how many tracers you need in place. Uh, this can be a science can be measured, right? And that's what we want to do. We want to demystify this entire issue. Uh, sounds like a science fiction movie. I know. I feel like we've been living a science fiction movie. But you can also study it and analyze it because we have a lot of experience now, right? We've been living with this for months. Other countries have lived with this for months. So let's learn. Let's be smart. That's who we are. And we can do that by each region in the state. Uh, and you see, uh, depending on the region in the state, uh, some regions are ready to go today. 
Uh, they just need to get some logistical pieces in order by the end of the week. Uh, some places are very close, central New York, uh, just uh, one or two criteria that haven't been met yet. Uh, and you can do that with Long Island, New York City, all across the state. When we reopen, we're talking about a phased reopening. That's what uh, everyone basically is doing. The question is uh, moderating that phasing and doing it intelligently. But starting with construction and manufacturing, retail, curbside pickup, uh, agriculture, fo forestry, and fishing, then to phase two, phase three, phase four, monitoring all along. We start with businesses that are more essential and pose a lower risk, right? Because once you say we're going to reopen, they say, well, what, what first? Well, really, everybody says me first. After me first, uh, what business is first, those that are most essential, and those that pose a lower risk because you can socially distance, et cetera. That's the matrix to make the decision. And then businesses have to do this their part also. This is not a one-sided affair. Uh, businesses have to put safety precautions in place. We understand what has to be done, uh, how the workforce has to have uh, personal protection, they have to be socially distanced, the workspace itself in some cases has to be adjusted, reconfigured. How do you have people work but they're six feet apart, they don't come to a cafeteria, there's no gathering, right? That's what we're trying to avoid. And then what processes do we have in place to test those employees or if an employee is symptomatic, you can get them testing right away. You can then do tracing within the workforce. You look at what's going on around the country, just listen to the news. Those meat processing plants where you have hundreds and hundreds of workers getting sick. Uh, we have an agriculture plant in Madison County that uh, dozens of people got sick. It's not about the meat or the agriculture, it's the gathering, it's the density. That's what creates the problem. Uh, so, learning those lessons and making sure we don't make those mistakes here. On retail, all retail will be authorized to do curbside pickup or drop-off or in-store pickup. The essential retail, which we've been, has been open all, all along, will continue operating under the current protocols. We'll also open certain businesses statewide, which are low-risk, uh, landscaping, gardening, uh, low-risk recreational activities uh, like tennis, drive-in movie theaters. Talk about going back to the future. Back to drive-in movie theaters. I'm okay with that, by the way. Uh, local officials, they have to do their work and their responsibility. Uh, testing and tracing, they have to have those systems in place. We have to have a system in place regionally to monitor the infection rate with the hospitals. That connection has to be very close. They have to know on a day-to-day -day basis, if not an hour-to-hour -hour basis, how many people are walking into the hospitals. Uh, I often do conference calls with all the hospitals in the state to find out exactly what is going on because they can tell you how many people walk through the door that morning or that afternoon. And you want to be able to watch that and that has to be done on a regional basis. Uh, businesses have to follow these new rules but we have to make sure they're following those rules also. And you will get calls from employees who say, I went back to work but by the way, I'm not comfortable. I don't think this is appropriate social distancing. I don't think I'm giving, been given the, uh, the appropriate equipment. Regional governor, governments have to be in a position to respond to those. The local governments have to be in communication with each other. We do this on a regional basis. So there are a number of counties in that region. But it's one region. And, you know, this virus doesn't respect county borders or state borders. 
those governments have to be in contact with each other. If you know what's happening with your neighbor, you know what's happening in your district. Uh, so that has to be in place and that has to work. And there's also something we call a regional control room, which is made up of uh, the top officials, government officials, academic officials, uh, healthcare professionals that are watching the situation in that region develop. You are going to increase activity. Depending on how intelligently you increase activity will be the possible effect on the spread of the virus. You need to know what the impact is. You need to know it in real time, and you need to be in a position to respond. If it does not go well, and you see that infection rate moving because the hospitals tell you they see an increase or because your testing data shows an increase, you have to be able to pull the plug or slow down the increase in activity, and that's what we call the circuit breaker, right? So you're increasing the activity, you're watching the infection rate, you're watching the hospitalization rate, you see that start to tick up, you have to have a circuit breaker. Slow down the activity level because you're increasing the infection rate and nobody wants to be there. That means you're going back to the other side of the mountain. And we just made it over the mountain. Nobody wants to go back to the other side of the mountain. Uh, so those regional control groups are very important. They have to be in place. They have to communicate. Everyone has to know what each other's responsibilities uh, are going forward. And we have been working with the regions all across the state over the past few weeks. We have those uh, groups assembled. But uh, this week, it's Monday. Before Friday, start talking, start communicating, understand who does what, where. And that's true in regions uh, all across the state. But I would urge them now to get on the telephone or Zoom or whatever the, your preferred technology. Start talking, start understanding what happens on Friday, what do our numbers look like, uh, and let's get that all set sooner rather than later. This is the next big step in this historic journey. First phase was figure out what we were dealing with because we had no idea. Scramble, frankly, to deal with a situation that dropped from, uh, from another planet. Stabilize. Uh, ramp up the health care system, inform people, get people to understand what we were dealing with, and uh, control the damage. That's the mountain to me. We're now on the other side of the mountain. Next step, how do we reopen? How do we reopen intelligently? And how do we reopen without taking a step back? Uh, well, what we have done thus far is really amazing. And it was because we were smart and because we were unified. And because we did that, we averted tragedy. Let's just remember where we were, right? Remember where you were before you take a step forward. We had the virus that attacked us from Europe the virus was coming. They now say, the experts now say, the geniuses now say, the virus came from Europe in January and February. And you know what? No one knew. No one knew with all the sophistication, with all the public health organizations, with that whole alphabet soup of agencies. Nobody knew the virus was coming from Europe. Everybody's looking at China, and the virus is coming from Europe. Why? Because by the time we moved, the virus had traveled from China to Europe. And then people are getting on flights from Europe, coming to New York. Two million travelers. Two million travelers came from Europe. We had no idea. So New York, the East Coast, people were landing at JFK. 
They were landing at Newark Airport, and that's where the virus came from, January, February, March. Nobody knew. European travel ban goes into effect mid-March. It's too late. It was already here. Okay, let's learn the lesson going forward. But that was the situation. Those were the cards we were dealt. That's why New York had such high numbers. Not because there's anything special or different about New York, but because New York is where the European flights were coming in, and we didn't know. That was the situation that we were handed. They then say, well, we project hospitalizations to be 120,000. I said, 120,000? You know how many hospital beds we have in the state? 50,000. How can we have hospitalizations of 120,000 if we only have 50,000 beds, counting every bed in the entire state of New York? If you could coordinate every bed, you have 53,000 beds. And they projected 120,000. So scrambled to try to get more hospital beds. But the only real course was you have to reduce the infection rate. How do you reduce the infection rate? You have to close down, stop people from spreading, stop gathering, stop density. We did that. Otherwise, thousands more people would have died. Thousands more would have died. That is not rhetorical. That is not dramatic. That is a factual statement. Thousands more people would have died. We made that happen. We changed that trajectory. I didn't even know it was possible at one time. When this started, we were at a truly bad and frightening place. If we didn't change the trajectory of this virus, and we had 120,000 people show up at our hospitals, we would have made the situation in Italy look like a walk in the park. We were really at a very, very bad place. Again, through no fault of our own. Uh, virus came from Europe. Whoever would have figured that? Somebody should have, but above my pay grade. We changed the trajectory dramatically by what we did. And that was smart. But we have to stay smart. And we have to stay united. You look at what we've done. New York, the cases are now on the decline. You look at the rest of the nation outside of New York, the cases are still on the incline. We took the worst situation in the nation and changed the trajectory so now we're on the decline. The rest of the nation, the cases are still on the incline. That is because of what the people in this state did. If you had said, when we started this, yes, we have more cases than anyone else. Yes, we had this European virus attack us and nobody expected it. But we're not only going to change our trajectory, we're going to change the trajectory more dramatically than any place else in the nation. And when you look at the nation compared to New York, you're going to see us on the decline, the rest of the nation on the incline. People would have said it was impossible, but we did it. But we have to stay smart. On this next phase, we have to learn from the mistakes that others have made. And we're not the first to reopen. And that's a good thing, because you can look around and learn. Other countries reopened too fast. They didn't have controls in place. And they reopened, and then they had to slow down or they had to stop. We don't want to do that. We want to monitor our reopening so if there's any change, we can immediately calibrate it. Some states have not coordinated their actions. So you have one county doing this, another county doing this. You've confused the general public. And by the way, Monroe County cannot open uh, in and of itself. Onondaga County cannot open in and of itself. Albany County cannot open in and of itself. There is no county-by-county county plan here. 
it has to be coordinated, and it has to be at least in a region. And we did that. Other states didn't. It was smart. Uh, and there's one set of rules, and the public has to understand the set of rules. Some states are opening even though they haven't met the CDC guidelines, which I don't even know how that happens. The federal government says here are the CDC guidelines, which are basic health guidelines. Some states don't meet those guidelines, and they're opening anyway. Well, there's a lot of pressure to open. I know, but pressure doesn't mean you act unintelligently, right? Some states opened and then saw a rush of people from surrounding states. We've talked about that here, the concept of an attractive nuisance. Finger Lakes opens. You can't open up an attraction or a site that will be attracting people from outside the region, and then you have a problem you never encountered, right? Uh, so that's something to watch. And uh, some places never really made the people part of the plan. And that is a fundamental mistake. Because this is not, we are not at a point where government is going to solve anything, frankly. This is people who are solving the problem. Personal opinion, as opposed to facts. I did one thing right as governor that I'm proud of. I got the people involved in this situation to a greater degree than they have been involved probably in modern history probably in modern history. From day one, this was of such a magnitude that unless people engaged and understood and bought into this, government was impotent. Government, state government can't impose, enforce any of these things that we did. Stay in the house, close every school, close every business. State government can't enforce that. People had to understand the facts and people had to engage in governing themselves in a way they hadn't in decades. I don't know what happened. I'm still trying to figure out when government got to a place or when society got to a place where people would accept uh, the lack of professionalism from government the lack of competence from elected officials. Uh, I don't know when government became so political uh, and it all became about rhetoric rather than actual competence, but it happened somewhere along the way. That government could not handle this situation. People had to get engaged, people had to be informed. And that's the one thing I did right. Now, they got engaged because it mattered. This is not an abstract issue. You're talking about people's lives and people's health and the health of their children. So they were interested. They were engaged. But they were also informed. And I worked very hard every day to make sure they knew the facts. Trust the people. Lincoln, right? An informed public will keep this country safe. True. And that's exactly what happened here. And that's what we're going to continue to do. People need to be part of this. The whole plan that we're outlining today is all down. It's online. It's in a book. People need to understand exactly how we do this second phase, just the way they understood how we were going to get over that mountain and how we were going to flatten the mountain. They have to understand now how we reopen, and they have to be part of it. Understand the plan. Hold me accountable. Hold me accountable. Hold your local officials accountable. But people have to be part of it. And they have to know the facts and know what we're doing. Because it's going to come down to how people react and how people behave. And if they understand what we're doing, they will do it. Just as I couldn't enforce any of this on day one, the local officials are not going to be able to enforce it either. Nobody's going to mandate personal behavior. People have to wear a mask. People have to be smart when they show up at work. People have to be smart when they shop. 
they have to understand this is not the floodgates are open, go back, do everything you were doing. Be smart. Nobody's going to protect your health but you. No one's going to protect your children's health but you. Well, children aren't affected. Oh, really? That's another fact that they're going to change on us. Now we're worrying about, uh, we have 93 cases that we're investigating of young children who have COVID-related uh, diseases. So this is about keeping yourself smart and keeping yourself healthy and keeping your family healthy. We'll do everything we can. But you have to be New York tough. Smart is the first word after tough. United, disciplined, loving. Thank you for being here. Any questions? Governor Cuomo, what will Friday look like, May 15th? Can people just report for work at a construction or manufacturing company that's qualified to open at 9 a.m., start a business? And can a whole staff return? Or who will give those answers? The, that is going to be, uh, as I said, with this is now a shift, right? We're sort of going from phase one, which is basically a state-controlled one set of rules all across the state. That was phase one. This reopening phase is locally driven, regionally driven, and regionally designed. So the businesses that can open are the businesses that are approved by that region and approved with these conditions, right? Uh, every business that reopens is going to have to meet certain conditions. The state set a certain number of conditions. Local governments may add additional conditions to those business, businesses and how they open. And that has to be done on a region-by-region -region basis. So get that information sometime prior to Friday. Yes. Governor, yes. how long do you anticipate being at each phase? You know, obviously a lot of the big businesses in our area, in any area, is phase two. So how long do you anticipate it taking to get to that point? You can, it will, it will be determined by the facts and the numbers as you go along, right? You are more of a visual person. You're turning a valve, increasing the economic activity. Your question is how fast can we open the valve? You have a dial right next to the valve that says infection rate. You have another dial that says hospitalization rate. You can open that valve as fast or as slow to keep that infection rate below 1.1, which is what they call uh, outbreak. If it hits 1.1, it means the virus is increasing exponentially. So watch that dial, watch the hospitalization rate, and the timing of phase one, phase two, phase three, it's determined by those two dials. It's determined by those facts. You watch the infection rate, you watch the hospitalization rate as fast as you can come online without uh, increasing the virus spread to outbreak or increasing the number of deaths, then that's how fast you reopen the economy. Will you shut it if it's too fast? The local region has a control room and a circuit breaker, we call it, to stay with the graphic physical metaphor, circuit breaker. If you see those dials going into the red zone, if you're really closely watching the dials, you wouldn't have to turn the valve off. You would just slow the valve a little bit, depending on how well your dials are calibrated and whether you're watching or not. So the best would be just slow instead of off. But if uh, the dials go into the red zone, circuit breaker, turn the valve off until you get the dials back under control. We, the whole ride across the mountain has been getting the spread of the infection under control, what they call the infection rate, how fast it's spreading. It has to be uh, under one, which is one person who is infected infects less than one other person, right? You have to keep the infection rate below that, and you have to keep the hospitalization rate at a manageable level. 
you can't overwhelm your hospitals, period. Because then people die, and that is a universal bad thing. You watch those two dials, and you calibrate it locally. Well, how fast can you open? Nobody knows. It, it also depends on how smart you are in the opening. Now, if you open businesses, and the employees are smart, and the business owners are smart, well, then, theoretically, nobody should get infected, right? You should be able to go to work, be six feet apart from everyone, have the right precautions, nobody gets infected. Infected. You do it wrong, you're at the meat processing plants and the poultry processing plants that we've seen across the nation. You open up, everybody goes to one place, a few people have the infection, and now you have a thousand workers infected. How did that happen? It was improper precautions in the workplace. So uh, you have to, it depends on how businesses do, how employees do, and then you watch those dials. As fast as you can reopen, reopen. Just watch the dials. Governor Cuomo, as businesses are coming up with these reopening plans and we move on from phase one to phase two, how long will the businesses in each phase keep these plans in place? Like say, how long will they have to stay six feet apart or when will it be okay to maybe lift those plans? It depends on the facts. You'll know. You'll watch. Your, your, your basic question is when do we don't have to worry about the virus anymore? I hope it's tomorrow. I doubt it's tomorrow. Uh, it depends on how good we are at reducing the spread and controlling the spread. It's how smart we are. It's our actions, our behavior. That's why I come back to who slowed the spread in the beginning? The people of the state. Nobody else. There was no government action. It was an unprecedented action of the people, presented with the facts, informed and engaged. Hasn't happened in my lifetime. Hasn't happened in my lifetime. I've never seen this situation before, where people actually did what the Founding Fathers thought they would do that they would really care and really get engaged and really get informed and really uh, act on what they believe. Uh, you know, for so many years, what government did was just uh, irrelevant or overly political or you didn't believe anyone, you didn't trust anyone, so they just tuned it out, right? I have to live my life. I can't watch this sideshow called government politics. Yeah, well now, it's a matter of life and death, and they got engaged. Tell you something else gratuitously. I also believe if we actually learn from this moment, you know, we talk about reimagining New York so that we don't just build back, we build back better, and we're going to do that. Uh, I also think this is a moment that could change history in this country for the better. You, you, whoever the you is that started this virus, you had a wake-up call for this country and a moment of in history that people have never gone through before. You stopped the country. You stopped the economy. You put, we call it pause in New York, you put people's lives on pause. And everyone went through a period of turmoil and stress and reflection on their own personal lives, their family lives, their whole situation. Uh, government, society, I think this is going to be a reevaluation all across the board. And I think we can be the better for it. I believe that. I believe we individually can be the better for it. I believe my kids are going to be the better for it. I believe I am going to be the better for it. I believe my family is going to be stronger for it. And I believe the state is going to be better for it on an individual and a collective level. And I think people are going to think about society and government differently than they ever did. Because it really, really matters now. And they understand how 
government can make a significant difference in their lives. And it's not going to be a sideshow anymore. They're not going to tolerate it. I believe that. So they were in charge, the people. They accomplished a great, great feat in this state. We had the worst situation in the nation, the worst. And now our numbers are on the decline, and the rest of the country is still on the incline. So what New Yorkers did, nobody could have imagined. If they show that same resolve and intelligence in this next phase, it's up to them. Governor, it is up to them. Governor, with uh, businesses reopening and schools still closed, there's going to be a need for child care. Are there guidelines for daycares reopening? I didn't see it on your graph there. When could daycares open? Yeah, yeah it's a very good point. Look, we said all along, the closing of the schools uh, had a direct impact on what you could do with the businesses, right? And we said you couldn't open all the businesses wholesale without opening schools because you'd make it very problematic. How do people go to work uh, with their children at home? We said we're not opening schools for the remainder of the academic year. Uh, so these business openings until the end of the academic year, you're going to be in phase one, phase two. You're not going to have all the businesses open. But arranging child care for those workers who need it are one of the responsibilities of these regional councils. You have to have daycare available, child care available for those workers who now are going to go back to work. Uh, Can you hear me okay with this thing on? With the mask? Yeah. Leave the mask on. All right. For multiple reasons. <laughs> you sound like the father of a woman I dated. Yes. Uh, yeah. The father of the woman you dated was right. <laughs> and I would make an exception on the I like the boyfriend rule if you were the boyfriend. Just so we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three key factors for regional reopening, hospitalizations, hospital deaths, new hospitalization rates. You explain that. The one thing is, a lot of our viewers want to see that on a consistent data. They want to be able to see how a region is doing, and we can't seem to get that data. Uh, we know that you have it, and it's provided to you. You're kind enough to share it on a statewide basis, but again, this is a regional Yes, sir. Factor. You're exactly so, right. uh, Wow. Thank you. So, if you uh, lightning strikes, yes. So, yeah, just when you thought it was impossible, yeah. So, <laughs> anything can happen once. <laughs> yeah. So, if blind you can get a kernel of corn every once in a while. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So, uh, none of the uh, so does this, the state health department does have a, a website where they provide information, but none of those are things the metrics upon which the data of reopening are based. Um, you have said you've worked very hard every day to make sure that we get information and to hold you accountable. Can you get the State Health Department to start releasing that information on a consistent daily basis so folks all involved in this can keep track of it and Good know question. what we're doing? Good question. You're right. When can we put up the daily hospitalization rate uh, region by region? This dashboard that the governor put up today will be public today. So you can go to a website, you'll see how the regions are doing. It gets updated every 24 hours starting today. Excellent. One more thing on a business reopening. Do they have to submit a plan to the state? In no, they do it region by region. The regions will handle it? Because yes. Some were concerned that if there's one agency in charge of this, they may get overwhelmed like the State Department yes. of Labor was. So yes. it's the regional region by Bob region. Duffy will yes. help us with that? Bob Duffy, Adam Bello. Joe Morelli. Call Joe Morelli. Phone number 202. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless you.